guys, I'm back. I don't know what's happening here with, with Facebook, but um, my husband tells me that we were getting a lot of comments and a lot of shares. So maybe it overheated, but I don't know. But I am back, so if you can see me, if you could hit a, uh, give me a heart or hit a like and make a comment for me and let me know if I'm still freezing or if you can hear me and see me. So go ahead and let me know. Other, and other than that, we're gonna just kind of di dive deep in. We have two more takeaways to go through and I would love to answer more of your questions. Okay, I see a first like, second like, and um, curious you guys, have which of you have seen the thyroid secret? So let me know if you saw it during the, the sneak peek, if you're watching it now, or if you are just joining me on Facebook and just learning about the thyroid secret, I would love to know. If you've seen it, I'd also love to know what you thought about the thyroid secret. If you haven't, I do have a link for you guys here um, in the description. So Katerina says, I could see and hear you. Okay, yay, so we're back. And Tara sent me a picture. Um, I don't know if it's a girl or a lion, but it's really, really cute. Um, Abby says she hasn't watched yet. So Abby, really great to have you. I'm excited. Um, Greg and Rachel say sneak peek. Awesome, guys. So let me know if you have any questions from that and let me know what you thought. Pat also saw the sneak peek. Um, and then Tara says she just watched and she has so much to relate to. Lori said she watched the first three episodes and ran out of time. Lori, good news. We're doing it all again starting March 1st. I guess that's today. So you can check in and tune into the Thyroid Secret tonight. Make sure you hit, um, you register for that. So I have the link to register for you in the comments. If you are watching this, um, please go ahead and share this on your timeline so that other people with thyroid disease can know that this free series is happening right now. So we're not like releasing it every month or anything. So we were just we just released a sneak peek to my community. So we, a lot of you guys, and then we're just releasing it now as the world premiere for the next nine days. March 1st through the 9th is when the Thyroid Secret is gonna be live. And my purpose for the Thyroid Secret is to dispel the myths of thyroid disease and show you the path on how you can recover your health and feel better. Um, I don't think these things should be the world's best kept secrets. Um, my story is that I was a pharmacist. I, I still am a pharmacist actually. And I was having horrible symptoms ever since from the time I was in my first year in undergraduate studies. Um, once I got to grad, graduate school, pharmacy school, I, my symptoms just kept getting worse and worse and worse. What ended up happening is I spent about 10 years with fatigue and a whole host of other symptoms that were misdiagnosed as mental health conditions. Um, I was gaining weight. I was losing my memory. I was losing my hair. And finally, when I was diagnosed with thyroid disease, I was told I, I could take thyroid hormones, which I was more, more than happy to take. You know, I was a pharmacist. I'm like, yes, bring on the drugs, right? But unfortunately, the thyroid hormones didn't really help me that much. Sure, I slept less, but it was like 12 hours instead of 11 hours, which wasn't that big of a difference. My hair was still falling out. I was still overweight. And I, you know, my brain still felt like it was de detached from my body because of all the brain fog I had. And so at that point is when I really dove in and started thinking about what can I do to address all these symptoms? And what can I do to potentially reverse my condition? Because I didn't believe that it just happened out of nowhere. Right? I thought, I believe everything has cause and effect. And I wanted to know if there was anything from a lifestyle perspective that I could do to feel better. Most conditions that I learned about in pharmacy school, we had some sort of lifestyle changes. Now, knowing what I know now, they weren't always the best lifestyle changes, but still, a lot of these lifestyle changes were recommended. Now, thyroid disease did not have any lifestyle recommendations, but there are a ton of them. And that's the thyroid secret. The secret is that you can recover your health, you can feel better, and that there's a lot of an, a lot of resources and a lot of things you can do on your own as well as with the help of a innovative healthcare practitioner. So, okay, so we're back in action. Um, Kylie says, hi, Dr. Wentz. Hello, Kylie. It's so great to see you. Rebecca says, thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. I'm so glad that you're here dialing in. Rachel says, did you get your hair back completely? I have heard not everybody gets their hair back completely and that it might just improve. Yes, so this is my hair. Um, I have a lot of it. It's very fine, but I have a ton of hair. Um, at one point, I lost a third of it. So my hair, I have little bald spots everywhere. Um, I actually ended up cutting it really short and dyeing it blonde because I had all these bald spots that were almost like visible. 
um, because my hair is dark. And all of it came back. At first, I ended up with little tiny spikes um, everywhere. And it was like, wow, I have little spikes. This is kind of odd. And now, now it's you know shiny again, and now it's full again. Um, for a while, it was very dull and dry, and it was falling out. Um, the first thing that will happen is your hair will stop falling out. And then after that, it'll start, you'll start seeing some spikes. And then after that, you'll start seeing it grow back. And you can absolutely get your hair back. And I know thousands of women have. Um, you may need to go beyond thyroid hormones, though. And the, this is what the thyroid secret is about. It's giving you all these strategies to go beyond thyroid hormone and to really get your health back and get you feeling like yourself again, and get you feeling beautiful, fit, and healthy and happy. Um, if you haven't tuned into the Thyroid Secrets, I have a link here in the description of this where you can go ahead and register and I hope that you check it out. It's been a life changer for the people that have already watched it the first time around. So we're still getting emails and messages from people who are saying, hey, I tried this that I found out on episode five and oh my goodness, it's working. So yay, glad to hear that. Um, Let's get some of these questions, you guys. Um, and if you're watching this, if you could go ahead and share this on your timeline and go ahead, hit like or love on um, Facebook, and that way I'll know that you're watching, and that will also allow other people to get interested because um, many people have thyroid disease. And um, we were talking about that in the last session, and we'll get into that, but I just, I'm seeing so many of your questions, and I want to make sure that I... I answer them. Um, Leslie says, I really want my hair back. Leslie, you can do it. So there are strategies that you can take on. One of them is making sure that you get on T3, you get your ferritin optimized. We discussed that in episode five. And those are some of the key starting points to getting your hair back. Terry says, I followed you for a while. Thank you for all the information. Oh, thank you so much, Terry. I hope that the information has helped. Um, Beth says, thanks for the information. You have no idea how much this means to me. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's so touching. I'm so glad to hear that. Yay. Um, Beth says, my doctor keeps me on levothyroxine. Yeah. And you know, I don't know. For some people, that's a great option. But for others, T4, T3 combination may be more helpful. So if you're struggling with symptoms, I would encourage you to watch episode three. Casey says, I just watched the first episode and she sent four hearts. So I'm thinking she probably likes it. So if you haven't had a chance, go ahead and tune in. Um, go to the link in the description here. Uh, Sean says, what's your secret? Uh, so my secret is that people with thyroid disease can recover their health. Um, and that's, that's the big secret between, behind the thyroid secret. And I don't think it has to be a secret. We're trying to get this out into the world. So again, if you have anybody that you know has thyroid disease, please go ahead um, and share this on your timeline. Um, actually, this is a great transition to the next Big takeaway. So thyroid disease is very, very common. Now, when I wrote up the description for the thyroid secret and try to write something catchy, I wrote up that one in three people have thyroid disease. Um, and these are actually very conservative estimates because 50% of people have thyroid nodules. And thyroid nodules can't be connected to an consist symptoms to an underactive thyroid. They can be connected to an overactive thyroid as well as thyroid cancer. Now we're looking at hypothyroidism. The most common cause of that, um, of an underactive thyroid, is a condition known as Hashimoto's. It sounds very rare and exotic, but believe me, it is not. So it's named after a Japanese doctor that discovered it over 100 years ago. And um, based on the latest diagnostic methods, we're looking at 27% of the population within just the United States that has Hashimoto's. And um, this condition has a few different stages and most doctors will not pick it up until stage four when the thyroid gland has been significantly damaged. I really want people to know that this condition can be prevented and that you can't stop its progression. Um, stage two is when it can, it can manifest. And that's when you'll start having symptoms, anxiety, panic attack, fatigue, weight gain. This will happen in stage two. And if you go to the average doctor, they're not going to do the right tests and they'll tell you that it's all in your head or that you need to eat less when, in fact, you have Hashimoto's. And um, the tests you need to ask for are going to be thyroid antibody tests. We cover more on that in episode one, so I hope you tuned in. Um, and then... You know, so many women are affected by thyroid disease. So five to eight women are affected with thyroid disease. 
for every man that's diagnosed. And the older we are, the more common it is. Pregnancy, puberty, and perimenopause are some of the big shifts when we have more incidence of thyroid disease. Um, here, here's the scary thing. A lot of women um, don't find out that they have thyroid disease until they've had miscarriage sometimes multiple miscarriages. Not having enough thyroid hormone and having a thyroid imbalance and thyroid antibodies can lead to miscarriages. Um, and this is a treatable and reversible and preventable cause of miscarriage. The other scary thing is women who um, don't have their thyroid gland, uh, their thyroid function in check during pregnancy are more at risk for having children with developmental disabilities. Again, this is preventable. Another important thing is that postpartum thyroid, postpartum thyroid issues can happen, and in many cases, they're misdiagnosed. So women will have, be told that they have postpartum depression, postpartum psychosis, when in fact it's their thyroid that goes out of whack. Now, we have a whole episode about this in the Thyroid Secret, so um, if you know any women, please go ahead and share this to your timeline and let them know that um, thyroid disease is very, very common, that they need to tune in because... Um, this is something that we need to get out in the world. Um, so one in five women are, are some of the statistics that are out there for thyroid disease. Um, if you could tag five women in this in your comments, that would be really helpful, and then share this in your video, so pe share this on your timeline so people could see. Um, of course, I, I believe it's far more common because we're looking at just 27% of our population having Hashimoto's. And many, many more women are affected than men, although men are affected as well. So that, that's another takeaway from the thyroid secret is how common thyroid conditions are. Um, I'm going to get to some of your questions. Gloria says, very informative, just prescribed antidepressants today for symptoms. So frustrated. Gloria, I totally get where you're coming from. I was so frustrated too. I was told that I needed antidepressants when I had panic attacks because my thyroid was out of balance and my immune system was attacking my thyroid gland, and there are simple solutions for anxiety. One of them is taking um, selenium, and there are simple things you can do for depression. One of them is optimizing thyroid hormone levels. I really hope that you check in for episode two. We're gonna talk about all the brain-related symptoms of thyroid disease, and I've got integrative psychiatrist, Dr. Kelly Brogan, um, one of my favorite food and mood experts, Trudy Scott, um, another one of my favorite psychiatrists, Dr. Hyla Cass, who have um, really figured out that a lot of mental health issues are actually not mental health issues. They're caused by nutrient deficiencies. They're caused by thyroid hormone abnormalities. And so anybody that's been diagnosed with depression, with anything, go ahead and make sure you watch episode two because you just might lose a diagnosis. And, and I mean this wholeheartedly. I've had letters from people from all over the world and clients who have said, wow, I no longer have to take antidepressants. I no longer have to take antipsychotics. And I really thought I was crazy, but you know what? I got my thyroid dialed in and I'm a normal person. And I've so been there too, because I used to have panic attacks and I was, I was, you know, thought I was losing my mind. Anyway, I'm going to get to more of your questions. Uh, Susie said, today's episode was very encouraging. I went from 1000 antibodies to about 150 at last check. Very cool. So um, antibodies are a marker of how aggressive the attack is on your thyroid gland. They're not the only marker you need to look at, but one of the really, really helpful markers. So um, whenever I see them lower, I get really excited because that means that we're um, slowing down the attack on the thyroid gland, and, and that's usually, usually really great news. Cassie says, I can't seem to get pregnant. Is that an issue with the thyroid? Cassie, it very, very well could be. I really encourage you to watch episode seven and you know, watch it like three times when it airs. So it airs on March 7th. That's when we start releasing it. And we're gonna cover all of these different potential root causes of fertility issues. And a lot of them can be related to the thyroid gland. And I really, really hope that this episode give, gives you an opportunity to have, um, to have a baby because you know that, that, that's such an important part of life, right? Um, let's see. We've got so many great questions coming in. Oh, Judith says, I lost four babies because my Hashimoto's was bad. It felt horrible. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, and, um, you know, I, I'm so sorry for your loss. I really, really want to get this message out there because, you know, I don't want women losing their babies um, and families going through so much trouble. 
um, when we can resolve it with with addressing the thyroid and and you know and for anybody that's um, lost a baby I don't want you to blame yourself because it's not your fault so um, we don't know what we don't know um, but I really want to let you know that there's information out there to empower yourself so again if you're watching this and you're finding it helpful please share this to your timeline and let your friends know about the thyroid secret because this information can really, really change lives and give people their health back. Um, way too many people have thyroid disease and fortunately conventional medicine doesn't take it very seriously. Um, they don't understand that all the symptoms are related. I'm going to ask a little bit more questions. Jason says, how reliable do you think the H. pylori breath test is versus the blood or stool test? So H. pylori, here's another secret. H. pylori can cause thyroid disease. So this is a bacteria that can be associated with stomach ulcers, but it can also cause Graves' disease and Hashimoto's. So because of this bacteria, conventional medicine will tell you to get your thyroid gland cut out. But in many cases, if you get, find out that you have the bacteria and if you treat it, eradicate it, your thyroid condition goes away. Holy cow, right? Um, and he was asking about the best testing. So the breath tests for H. pylori. These are going to be positive when you have like a full, full like raging H. pylori infection and you would probably have ulcer symptoms. But there's also subclinical H. pylori and these are the subclinical low grade chronic infections are triggers for Hashimoto's, for Graves' disease, for thyroid disorders, even for cancers. And the thing is you may be asymptomatic and the best test for that is to do is the stool antigen test. So that tells us if your immune system is recognizing the H. pylori pathogen within your body. And here's the thing, when the immune system recognizes the H. pylori pathogen, it may attack anything else that looks like the pathogen. And unfortunately for many of us, the thyroid gland looks like H. pylori to the immune system. Um, there's certain protein structures that have been identified, and I know I'm getting a little nerdy here, um, that look like uh, bacteria on your thyroid gland and so this can be kind of a case of mistaken identity so the the stool antigen test for H. pylori is what I recommend episode 8 it really dives into the chronic infections they're low grade like almost asymptomatic quote unquote because the symptoms are thyroid disease infections that can lead you to have thyroid disease and the, the really really exciting secret here is when you get rid of these infections you can sometimes maybe not in every single case, but you can get rid of thyroid disease. Um, in some cases, it may be a person may have multiple things going on, and that's why the thyroid secret is nine different episodes long, because we go through all the potential root causes and triggers that may lead you to have thyroid disease, so you can watch it and figure out what's relevant for you and really dial into that. Um, if you guys are just tuning in, we're talking about the thyroid secret. Today was the very, very first day it was it was on and um, I'm so excited that you guys have tuned in we have over I think close to 500,000 people that that tuned in to watch it and I'm so excited to hear that um, if you haven't um, you're missing out and I mean that and go ahead and register by by clicking on the link in the description here and if you've already watched it I would really appreciate if you would share this post to your timeline to let people know about the thyroid secret because you know the, the name is the thyroid secret but I don't think it should be a secret we should all know how to recover from thyroid disease right okay so um, question here from Lori thoughts about LDN for Hashimoto's it can be extremely helpful I've seen people get into remission and eliminate all of their symptoms key thing is you have to use it a certain way and um, Shannon Garrett an LDN nurse advocate and one of my dear friends explains that in episode three so I hope you dial in for that um, is subclinical hypothyroidism real Ricardo asks meaning normal labs Ricardo um, yeah subclinical hypothyroidism that's actually stage three of thyroid disease so we talked about how thyroid disease may take on five stages and they're all progressive so the longer you have it the later stage you're gonna have and um, stage two is when we start having symptoms and we start having antibodies Stage three is when a part of the thyroid gland has been damaged 
and we start getting into subclinical hypothyroidism. At this stage, you're going to have symptoms, and at this stage, you would likely benefit from thyroid hormones um, and supplementation. And this is also a really, really important stage for you to take action because you could potentially prevent having to go on um, thyroid hormones long term. Um, we do have strategies to reverse damage to the thyroid gland and regenerate thyroid tissue that I share in episode three. However, it's much easier and more efficient to prevent damage than to regenerate thyroid tissue. So just a little, and much, much less expensive too. So um, just a little heads up. Um, Paige says, I'm a ICU nurse. Yay, nurse. And Hashi oh, Hashimoto's has ruined my life. I'm so sorry for that. It creeped into my life at age 32. I have extreme fatigue and I'm on Synthroid. I've read your book, Do Probiotics Help? Does going gluten-free really show significant improvement? Is PCOS anyway related? These are such great questions, Paige. One, um, I'm so sorry about your fatigue. You're going to want to dial into episode five because we address some of the most helpful interventions, including thiamine that can turn fatigue around. Two, um, levothyroxine can also be something that doesn't help you with energy levels. So some people feel like, you know, dead fish in the water with levothyroxine and then they get on... Um, T4, T3 combination medications and like their spark comes back and they have more energy. Probiotics can really, really help. We discussed some of the most helpful ones in episode eight. So um, I am actually going to be working on a clinical trial with um, one specific probiotic and um, a doctor that you'll see in the episode, Dr. Zielstorf. Um, and so we're going to be talking about that in episode eight. Does going gluten-free really show significant improvements? Paige, um, gluten-free is one of those things that can be dramatically helpful. 88% of my clients and my readers feel significantly better gluten-free. Like I've, I did a survey about this over two years ago and over 2,000 people reported the same thing. They see improvements in fatigue. They see improvements in depression. Um, they, their mood gets better and they lose weight for the first time. And so this is something that can be very, very helpful. She also wanted to know if PCOS is connected. Absolutely. PCOS and Hashimoto's are very much connected. A hint for you, um, you're going to learn this all in the series, but um, blood sugar. Look into blood sugar. We get into that in episode six. Um, Twila wants to know, is episode one still available to watch? Yes. So uh, make sure you register, and we have the registration link in the description here, and then you shoot on over to um, your email because we'll send you a link on where to watch it. It's going to be available for the next... Um, 21 hours. So make sure you go ahead and get, get there, right? Don't miss out. Um, March 1st through the 9th is when we're airing all the episodes, one episode each day. Christina wants to know, have you seen conversion from Graves to Hashis? Thanks so much. Yes, the two conditions can co-occur. And a lot of people don't really realize that, but it's sort of like, um, it's almost like the way to describe it is the same condition. So it's just that a different part of the immune system a different part of the thyroid gland is targeted by the immune system. So a lot of times what you do for Hashimoto's um, is going to be really helpful for Graves and vice versa. The only exception, of course, would be you would want to take thyroid hormones for Hashimoto's and hypothyroid, and then for Graves' disease, you would want to um, address um, having too much thyroid hormone. So you'd want to suppress that, and there are um, medications and herbs that can do that, including um, LDN, which we discussed in episode three, which can be a non-toxic alternative. Uh, Luz wants to know, have people had their nodules shrink? Yes. So all of the interventions that we discuss in the thyroid secret can help to shrink nodules. And in full disclosure, I didn't really know this until I started having all of these um, people with Hashimoto's and with nodules reach out to me saying that they tried the stuff that was in my book and their nodules disappeared or went away. And so now um, we have a lot of information about that, um, that this is something that happens and um, we cover the strategies. Episode five is gonna be key for you. Um, hopefully that'll help you. Um, let's see. Question here. Oh. It's like, sorry, my Facebook is scrolling. Uh, Bonnie says, do you only discuss hypothyroidism? No, we discuss hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's, Graves' disease, an overactive thyroid. We discuss thyroid nodules as well as thyroid cancer, postpartum thyroid issues. We discuss um, thyroid issues in um, P3 
people with Down syndrome. So this is a unique population that's more at risk for having thyroid issues and um, thyroid issues during pregnancy. So we've really tried to cover the gamut of thyroid disease. And of course, hypothyroidism is the most common. Then you're going to see a lot of um, um, focus on hypothyroidism, but know that there are uh, really helpful interventions for the other conditions as well. And we're going to be giving you guys um, a lot of the same resources and strategies are going to be helpful for hypothyroidism. Let's see. Is it possible to do permanent irreversible damage to your thyroid gland? You know, yeah. So if you have your thyroid gland removed or radiated, that's going to be damage. And there's, um, you know, I don't want to say never say never, but in, in that case, I would really recommend getting on thyroid hormones. In some cases with Hashimoto's too, a person can completely destroy their thyroid gland. And um, we do have some interventions that can help regenerate thyroid tissue, but it may not be complete and they may not work for every single person. So right now we're looking at about 50% of people when they use these advanced interventions that are discussed in episode three, they can actually wean off of thyroid hormones, but it's not everybody across the board. That said, um, there's really, really exciting stuff happening and you should check into it. So even, even thyroid gland that was enlarged, shrinking and thyroid gland that was shrunken normalizing in size with some of these interventions. And this is, you know, you guys, I, I don't quote statistics in my, in my talks and I don't, you know, have clinical trials blaring on the screen or anything like that. If you want that, I have over, um, I have thousands of references in my books, Hashimoto's Protocol and Hashimoto's The Root Cause, as well as on my website. When I'm talking, I'm just, I'm, I'm just trying to give you guys really practical things, but there's a lot of research behind this. Um, Linda says, is this a secret and why? You know, yeah, it is a secret. It's like, it's a secret that I don't think should be a secret. And that's why we're calling the series The Thyroid Secret, because we want to get it out into the world. Um, and really, the thing is that, um, that most doctors don't know this information. And I don't think that they're trying to harm you. I don't think that they're being mean. Um, they just don't know what they don't know. So there are innovative therapies in uh, functional medicine, in the research, in even natural medicine that can be really, really helpful. But before modern medicine catches up, it's going to be 10, 15, 20 years. Um, and so that's why you, we're releasing the thyroid secret. So you can get this information now, not 30 years from now. Um, let's see. Thank you for including the link to the video in your last mailing. Glad to hear that. Um, let's see, another question here. How do you know, um, can migraines be related to Hashimoto's? Is it possible that these can go away um, and then return? So it looks like first weeks of increased dose then return. Yeah, so um, migraines can very much be related to Hashimoto's. Another really important thing to look at when you have both Hashimoto's and migraines is the magnesium nutrient. We, uh, the nutrient magnesium, we covered that in episode five, and I have seen people who were able to eliminate their migraines completely and then support their thyroid function and normalize their thyroid function on an ultrasound, um, thyroid gland damage on an ultrasound by taking magnesium. So we get into that. I'm really, really excited for you. Okay. So it looks like the questions are slowing down a bit and it's getting a little bit late. So I want to get into another takeaway. And if you guys are watching this, make sure you share this on your timeline so that other people can benefit from this information. And if you want to tune into the thyroid secrets, um, I hope that you do go ahead and click on the link that's in the description of this. So thyroid symptoms, thyroid symptoms can vary on the person and can go from not ex from not noticeable to pretty, pretty severe and debilitating. And so, um, unfortunately, I, one of my friends, um, JP Sears, who's hilarious, posted about thyroid disease, um, about the thyroid secret on his Facebook page. And there was, um, I believe it was a physician that wrote in that said, oh, thyroid disease, there's, it, it's not important. You know, it, 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 all you do is take thyroid hormones and then, you know, the person's cured and the condition goes away and all the symptoms go away. Yeah, that's not the case. That's not what I've seen with the majority of people with thyroid disease. Many of us continue to struggle. We have hair loss, we have weight gain, we have fatigue, and we're depressed. And then doctors tell us that that's normal. And I got this message when I was 25. They were saying, oh yeah, you're just getting older. 
You know, you're, it's normal for you to be tired, depressed, fatigued, and um, having anxiety, but it's like you don't have to live that way. And yes, it's related to thyroid disease, and yes, it's related to an immune system imbalance. And so if you can get rid of those things, you can feel beautiful, fit, energetic, calm once more. And, and you know, that's kind of the secret is there are ways to recover from that, and I really want to, that for you. So symptoms of thyroid disease, we have fatigue, brain fog, fertility issues, having children with disabilities, um, having weight gain or an inability to lose weight. And some people, they actually have excess weight loss, hair loss, panic attacks, anxiety. Um, I've even seen some people misdiagnosed with bipolar disorder and psychotic disorders, um, joint pains, carpal tunnel syndrome, a loss of the upper third eyebrow, not sweating, being cold or being excessively hot. Um, these are all potential symptoms. And then dizziness, vertigo, hives, these are all additional symptoms that are related to thyroid disease and the underlying immune system imbalance. Palpitations, irritability, um, eye, eyeball protrusion, droopy eyelids, these are some other things. Dry skin, dry hair, hair that's difficult to brush, hair that's falling out. Um, these are all potential symptoms of thyroid disease and also symptoms that your thyroid is not properly cared for. If you're more tired, if you're like, I mean, if, if you're not fit and um, feeling really great all the time and if your hair is falling out, that that's not something that you should accept. Um, and I know um, I'm going to get a little bit emotional here, but when I was 25, I was told that I should just accept that I was going to be tired all the time and that sleeping 12 hours was normal and that, yeah, like it, it was normal for my sweatpants to be getting tight. And like now I, like I'm really fit and I have a lot of energy. I have a lot of hair and, um, you know, like some, some of you might hear this, oh, well, you just had a baby, you're tired or, or, you know, you're going through um, perimenopause, you're tired, you're, you're 40, you're 50, you're tired and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, or you're gaining weight. It doesn't have to be that way. It does not have to be that way. Um, I'm living proof and I have over 60 people in the series that are living proof. And I have, you know, from, from the work that I've been doing over the last four years before I decided to create a documentary, I've collected thousands of success stories of people who've recovered their life. You know, like you, you don't have to live this way. So um, those are some of the symptoms. Um, another question, can other illnesses such as mononucleosis trigger thyroid disease? Joan, this is such an important question. Thank you so much for asking. And yes, um, mononucleosis, Epstein-Barr virus, um, Epstein-Barr virus causes mono. This can absolutely trigger thyroid disease. And um, we used to think that this was something you had and you couldn't really deal with. But in episode eight, we have um, some wonderful experts that are sharing innovative ways to actually get rid of this and um, lose your lose your Epstein-Barr virus and potentially even recover your, you know, lose your thyroid diagnosis. And of course, um, I encourage you to check in and check this out for yourself. Um, I wouldn't have believed it myself, but I got to spend um, an hour or a day at the clinic of the wonderful um, Terry Cochran, who's a wonderful nutritionist that's been working with Epstein-Barr virus. And yeah, that can definitely be a trigger and you can recover from it. So it's, it's not hopeless. Um, you guys, there's so many things you can do to recover your health. And it's about figuring out what's true and relevant for you. That's why the documentary series is nine episodes so that you can connect with all the different symptoms, you can connect with all the different root causes and triggers, and then you, we can create a plan for you to get your health back. Um, so I hope that you'll dial into the thyroid secrets. If you haven't already, there's a link in the description here for you guys to go ahead and sign up. Um, make sure you watch every episode because this information can really, really change your life. And um, it's only going to be online for nine days, one day per episode. Each episode will be on for 24 hours. I hope that's enough time for you guys to watch. Um, and we, you know, really please do share this with everybody you know. If you could tag them in the comments here or share this on your, on your timeline, that would be really helpful to make sure that they can get in on this. All right. So, um, Next question, what is the best magnesium? So magnesium citrate is one helpful version if you tend to be more constipated and anxious. Magnesium glycinate is another version that if you tend to be um, more 
um, more, you know, more towards diarrhea, that, that would be the glycinate I would use. Let's see here. Another question is, uh, Lori says, first stop eating gluten. Yep, yeah, absolutely, Lori. I, can, I couldn't agree, agree with you more. Um, got a lot of questions coming through. If antibodies are normal, why the continue of symptoms? So, Lori, um, in some cases, not everybody has antibodies. So, anywhere from 10 to 30% of people may be seronegative which means that they don't have antibodies, but there still might be an imbalance going on with the body. The other thing to, con to keep in mind, um, so we have three thyroid antibodies or four antibodies that we normally test for, but there could be dozens of different antibodies. Researchers have identified at least seven or eight of them, and then we're not testing for most of them. So just because you don't have TPO and TG or TSH receptor or TSI antibodies, does not mean you don't have thyroid antibodies. It just can mean that you know we don't have the modern tests available to test for those. But if you're having symptoms, I would highly encourage you to watch the thyroid secret and, and figure out what is relevant for you and start taking some action. Where is the link, Candace wants to know? So the link you could see is in the description of the video. So right under my name, if you see, um, there's a link, tinyurl.com slash thyroidsecretmarch. tinyurl.com slash thyroidsecretmarch. Let's see. Um, Lisa asks, what causes Graves' disease? So again, it's the immune system imbalance, and there's various things that can cause Graves' disease, and these are going to be nutrient depletions, food sensitivities, an impaired ability to handle stress, toxins, potentially chronic infections, and any of these things can um, set off the immune system. Um, we discuss this all throughout the series, and I hope that you check in. And let's see, so we we're about 7.15 here um, in Colorado, this is where I am. And another key takeaway I want to give you guys is you can reverse thyroid disease and its associated symptoms. So if you go after lifestyle changes, optimizing your hormone levels and figuring out what the root cause of your condition is, you can absolutely recover your health and fit, feel beautiful, fit, and calm once more. Um, it's just amazing what can happen when you take charge of your own health. This is why I created the Thyroid Secret documentary series, so you could do just that. And I hope that you'll check in and I hope that you'll watch the Thyroid Secret. Please go ahead and share this information with all of your friends. Um, go ahead and share this on your Facebook timeline and um, tag some friends in, this, in, this, in these comments here. Um, and let's see here. I wanted to go through my little notes here. Um, wanted to go through, again, how to sign up. So the description is in the link here. Go to tinyurl.com slash thyroidsecretmarch. That will give you access to the thyroid documentary series that's online from March 1st through March 9th. We have one episode every single day that'll be released for you, and um, you'll have 24 hours to watch it, so I highly take, encourage you to take advantage because you're gonna learn what you need to do to take charge of your own health and recover. Um, I really hope that you guys found this information helpful. I know that we went a little bit overboard. Um, I know we apologize for the technical issues that we had. It is now 7.18, and I wanna thank you so much for dialing in. And I will see you tomorrow night, same place, same, same time. So tomorrow night um, at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. That's 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, and 5 p.m. Pacific. So thank you so much, you guys, for dialing in. Um, and um, yeah, really a pleasure connecting with you all tonight. Um, I'm going to get some rest because tomorrow is a really, really big day. If you haven't watched today's episode, there is still time. Go ahead and watch it. And I'm hoping to see you guys all tomorrow. Um, hopefully we'll have a little bit more time for Q&A. Hopefully we won't have as many technical issues. So thank you so much, you guys. Twila says thank you. Um, Yadid asks, I already signed up. How do I get the link to work? Um, please go. Please email info at thethyroidsecret.com and my team can help you out with that. So, Vinu, thank you so much. Lori, thank you so much. Goodbye. Um, Shirley, thanks so much for dialing in. Meredith, um, nice to see you. Sheila, 
Thank you, Vicky. Hey, Vicky from Australia. It was nice to see you on here. PJ, good night, PJ. Mary, um, you're so welcome. She says, thank you for doing this. Um, it's been such a pleasure to hang out with you guys. Casey, um, you're so welcome. Okay, you did. Thank, thank you, guys. Um, I hope that you all have a wonderful night, and I'll be looking forward to seeing you tomorrow night. And really, I hope that this series changes your life. I know that I actually, I know that it will. I know that the series will change your life and I hope you make the time for yourself and make yourself a priority to tune in. So I will see you tomorrow and good night, Melanie, Susie, Kaya, Judith, Eric. Good night, you guys. It's been such a pleasure hanging out.